How you going guys? Welcome back to another video. On this one, I'll be showing you and giving you a rundown and a full guide on how you can fade out your clear coat. All right guys, so here's uh, the bumper. So what I've done is I've just sanded back the scratches so they're all feathered out. Um, and what I've done is I've used 400 and then 800 over the repairs. Um, and then I've used 800 grit on an orbital sander just to knock the orange peel back on the bumper. Um, I've then used grey scotch bright and a scotchy paste and basically what I've done I don't know if you can see this on camera um, But basically it's really shiny on this part of the bumper that then goes really dull here where I've sanded it back So what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna cover my repair I'm then gonna put a, a coat of clear here and then once that's flashed off I'll then put my second coat about here Leaving a good couple of inches between my last coat and the end of the scotchied area And I'll know where that is because uh, I'll, I'll put a bit of tape on the headlight Just to give me a bit of a, a reference guide to where that ended I'll just mask up the mould and, and the fog light there um, And because of the shape of the bumper um, I didn't want to take it too far So I've decided to go here now down the bottom, uh, it gets a little bit tricky. It's very wide here. Um, where you do your fade outs of your clear coat, you want to try and pick the skinniest area on the bumper. So for this up the top, here is the skinniest, opposed to up here, it's rather wide. And then following it down, here is the skinniest area. So same thing as up here, I've uh, scotched to about here. So I'll do my first coat here, second coat here, and uh, I'll fade out the edge of the clear in both areas. Alrighty guys, so now it's in the booth, I can see where the shiny area is and where the scuffed up area is. So I'm gonna get a bit of tape and just put that at the end of the shiny area. So now I know I can do my first coat of clear here, second coat of clear here, and I've got about two to three inches of uh, area where um, I know that I can just like, polish that up afterwards. So this is just a quick I guess a car yard job, uh, just to fix up a couple of little scratches. That's all it is. Alrighty guys, so I've just finished basing that up. It's time to start laying down my clear coat. I've turned off the booth so you guys can hear me so I can explain exactly what I'm doing here. So um, as you can see, I've masked up the bumper. I've done my little blow-ins. I've blended out the color uh, with the room that I had um, to try and keep everything really small. So this is, I guess, class as a uh, smart repair <laughs> uh, but yeah so uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video uh, I'll put some tape here on the headlight that is an indication or an indicator to tell me where the scotched area ends so what I'm gonna do guys is put my first coat of clear over the bumper my first coat is gonna start here once that's flushed off, I'm then gonna put my second coat starting here. So I've staggered my two coats, um, and I'll obviously like, clear the rest of the uh, the panel. Uh, same thing down here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, guys, is same as up the top, uh, I'm gonna put my first coat roughly probably here, and do the rest of it, and then my second coat will be here. That will allow me probably a good, probably, I don't know, four inches to polish up once it's all dry. So um, a good little technique for doing things like this is don't paint like you normally would, where you would be like parallel with the panel. How I like to tackle things like this to keep the clear coat away from this area is to face the gun pretty much on a 45 degree angle. I'll blow the edge in where I wanna start um, get to a certain point on the panel uh, so I can then get parallel again and then paint the rest without too much overspray going over the area that I want to try and keep as clean as possible. So same again, uh, like down the bottom, I'll go on a 45. I want that paint facing the other way. It doesn't matter if it gets covered in overspray because I'll be then covering it with a full coat um, once I get up that far. So with that said, guys, let's hook the airline up and let's put a coat down. So I'm gonna start here, because that's where my first coat will be, um, allowing me enough room to put another coat down and then have enough room to polish it. So.
And there you go, there's our first coat down. Now I'm gonna turn the booth back on uh, to get this, uh, well, all the fumes out. I haven't got a mask on, obviously. So yeah, that's our first coat. Now, um, yeah, it starts getting wet here. So I know I can do my second coat here. I can actually pull that, that plastic back a little bit um, so I can actually see where the last coat was. Now, typically, I would usually leave the plastic alone until I'm ready to fade out my last coat. Uh, the reason why I pull the plastic back is when uh, I fade out the edge of the clear, I want to be able to see where the scotchy part ends. Uh, very important that you don't fade out on shiny paint because when you go to polish it, uh, you're just gonna lift the paint straight off because it's got nothing to adhere to. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll turn the booth back on. It's rather fumy in here. So uh, yeah, let's do that. I'll come back uh, once this is flashed off. Alrighty guys, so our first coat's all flashed off. Uh, if we can get on the right angle here, uh, not sure if the camera will pick this up. I can barely even see it, but my first coat starts here. So if I was to put my second coat down here now, I'll end up getting that plastic stuck. So uh, what we're gonna do is put our gun down there. It's just pull this plastic back a little bit. Now we know because of our indicator, we know where the scotchy ends. So um, we're gonna pull that back. As you can see here, it's nice and shiny here where it's dull here. So um, I'm gonna get some tape and just tape this up a little bit better because we've pulled it all back. Like so. And a little bit up the top. So now I can see how much room I've got to actually fade this clear coat. Um, so if I can get on the right angle, all right. So right there is my first coat. Now I can see I've got that much room uh, between the edge of the scotch bright and my first coat of clear. So I'm gonna put my second coat about here and that will give me, I don't know, a good probably two inches of room to polish that area up. Uh, same down here. Um, I don't know if the camera can see that, but uh, it's shiny here where it's dull here. So I'm gonna again pull this back just a fraction um, and I'll put my second coat down. Now, when it comes to fading out the clear coat, you want to basically allow that second coat to flash off for probably about five to 10 minutes. Um, and that should be enough time to have the clear coat not wet, but dry enough to fade it out. So um, that should be all good. Uh, we'll just get some tape there, just so the plastic doesn't blow around and uh, maybe touch the wet paint. Uh, we'll tape that up so we don't get any overspray on the grill there. Um, and that's pretty much it, ready to rock and roll. So um, again, because of my marker here, I can see where the scotchy ends. It's a little bit further than that actually, but um, so my first coat is here. My second coat will be about here somewhere. Um, the reason why I didn't blend it up here or fade it out here um, is for a couple of reasons. Well, one is I've got a real sharp body line here. Now, when it comes to polishing up the the blend or the fading out of the of what the clear, I don't want to be doing too much polishing around body lines because you'll cut through the clear extremely quickly. Um, where down here, um, I've only got one real body line to worry about instead of two. So, um, yeah, hope that made made sense. I'm talking about like down here where there's like there's one, two, three body lines there. So um, at least here, we've only really got one or two to really worry about. So with that said, um, we'll throw some more tape up here because I can see a bit of a gap without making a mess. All right, so we can see where our first coat is. So we'll hook the airline back up and we'll put our second coat roughly here somewhere I reckon and you want to try and have it in a straight line you don't really want to have it zigzagging everywhere because fading it out will be a much easier like process if it's in a straight line All 
right, just do this last little bit. Just take it up a little bit further. You can see where it's dull and where it's shiny. Oh, I can anyway. <laughs> Might turn that air pressure down a little bit. Just wet that up a little bit better. All right, that looks pretty good. Yeah, so I've got a nice straight line there. I don't know if you can see that. Nice straight line. Um, and we've got a nice even coat of clear. And our second coat is right in the middle there. So I've got about two inches there to fade it out. That looks pretty good. Alrighty guys, let's talk about the two ways in which you can fade out your last coat of clear. So I've got a little bit of like clear left in my gun from the job. I'm just gonna pour that out, leaving just a little bit of clear in the pot. Just a little bit. That's pretty much good enough. Now I've got the FX reducer here. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of that into the clear over reducing the clear coat. I'm gonna swell that around, mix it up in the pot just a little bit. Um, that will uh, get the clear off the pot and off the lid. Uh, I'll use this now to wet up the edge of the clear coat. Now, I'm gonna absolutely butcher this name. Uh, now, this is the Normfest fade out thinner in an aerosol can. Really good for uh, smash shops, etc. cetera. Um, so I'll pronounce this word, I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> I'll probably completely butcher it, but the Normfest B Spritch and Lack. So, this is the uh, fade out thinner in an aerosol can. So I'll be using this on the lower part of uh, the bumper. I'll use a spray gun up the top, something I feel a little bit more comfortable doing with the spray gun. Um, but look, I've already gave this a test spray. It sprays actually pretty good. It atomizes the reducer really, really good. Let's jump in the booth and we'll fade out this last coat. Alrighty guys, so we've got our spray gun and we've got the aerosol can. Just before we start fading it out, I want to show you this aerosol. So the Normfest fade out thinner in the aerosol, the V Spritz and Lack. Let's check out how well it atomizes. We'll just move away from the car here um, and we'll give that a spray. It sprays really, really nicely. It doesn't spit and spatter. Uh, it sprays really, really nice and it, it looks like it atomizes extremely, extremely well. So uh, I'm actually looking forward to using this on this job. So uh, jumping back onto the job. So what we're gonna do guys is identify where the last coat was. So it's just here. And what we're gonna do, we'll just move this plastic out of the way a little bit. Uh, we'll get some tape and we'll tape that down so it doesn't affect our job whatsoever. Um, Cause keeping things nice and safe and uh, like proper, through the whole process uh, leaves you with a better job. So what you want to try and do is get on the right angle, see where it's uh, dull and, and see where the edge of the clear is. I'm just going to haze the thinners over the edge, just keeping an eye on it so it's not going to run. I'm just going to keep, I don't know, probably a good nine inches away from the panel. And I'm just going to wet that edge up. That's pretty much it. Now what you want to look for is not too much orange peel. Um, and you don't want to be going off into the shiny area. So that looks pretty good, guys. I'm pretty happy with that. Just wet up that little bit up the top. Um, we'll get down right on the angle because it really does pay to assess that edge and it looks really good. All right, so there's the aerosol done. So that looks really, really well. I think that's going to polish up really nicely. So with the spray gun, same kind of principle as the aerosol. Um, we want to try and, I reckon we'll leave that plastic where it is. I hope the GoPro uh, will actually see this. Um, it's really difficult, especially on white, to show this kind of video. But um, I'm gonna put the GoPro back on my head. Excuse me for a minute. Um, we'll grab the airline and the spray gun and um, I'll show you uh, doing it with a spray gun as well. So in regards to air pressure, look, I'm not gonna get all fancy, but you don't wanna be blowing a gale. You only wanna haze and wet up the edge. So we'll spray that through because we had a little bit of clear left in the gun. And all we wanna do, guys, is just wet that edge up. That's all we wanna be doing here. So get on the right angle so you can see the edge.
and just wet it all up. That's it. That's all you gotta do, guys. And that looks pretty good. I reckon that's gonna polish up extremely well as well. Beauty. Anyway, guys, uh, I'll come back tomorrow. I'll unmask it and I'll do a bit of a polish so you guys can see the final result. And um, yeah, that's this job pretty much done for a lot today. All right, guys, it's the next day. I've just pulled the car out of the booth, unmasked it, etc. It's time now to start polishing up those uh, blend or fade out areas. So there's two uh, polishes which I want to uh, recommend in this video. Uh, I've used these polishes in the past. Um, I actually polished the XB Coupe with these polishes. So look, I know they do a fantastic job, so I'll be using them again in this video. So. Um, Normfest is a really great company. They're actually a sister company to uh, DNA Paints. Um, and they have a wide range of products from automotive paints through to polishers. So here we've got the Scratch Cut. So this comes in a, a 500 gram uh, bottle. And I've also got the Scratch Finish. So if you want to talk like stages, then the Scratch Cut is equivalent to your first stage. Um, it's basically a, a cutting compound. Um, and then you've got the scratch finish, which is equivalent to a stage two, stage three, very similar. So this will actually get rid of any swell marks made by the cutting compound or the scratch cut. So um, usually you would use two different separate pads, one for the scratch cut or the cutting compound and a separate pad for the scratch finish uh, or the swell remover, hologram remover, etc. So because uh, the areas that I want to be polishing on this bumper are quite small, um, you can run into some risks of cutting through the clear coat if you're using a conventional light polisher or buff. So for that, I've chosen to use my uh, little air polisher here. It's got like a probably a three inch pad on the front there. Uh, I'm going to use this to polish up those areas uh, of the blends or, uh, or on the fade outs. So with that said, guys, Let's get into it. A real key point when polishing, uh, even if it's with a little buff like this or polisher or an actual proper buff, is try and keep your pad below any body lines. If it's on top of the body line, you're going to be uh, polishing through the clear coat. So, uh, yeah, very important to try and keep your buff pad below the body lines. All right, guys, so it's all been uh, polished. Those fade out areas are all nice and glossy now. As you can see here, the gloss on the bumpers are consistent all the way around, uh, and same up on the top there as well. So um, yeah, it's just a real fast, easy way of uh, getting a few little chips or scratches uh, repaired. Um, and uh, you don't have to paint the whole bumper and take things apart. Um, even down there on the lower there, you can see that it's glossy. Uh, all the way along where we've painted it out. But yeah, that's pretty much a, uh, a rundown on how to fade out your clear coat. Hope you've all enjoyed this one, guys. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys on my next video. Your boots, your boots look like they've sunk. All right, cool. I'm actually recording. <laughs> thanks. Okay. Unmastered, etc. It's time now to polish up those blood, those blood. Blah, blah. I've got two polishers which I want to be showing you guys in this video. I've used both both. both, both.